All right, what's going on everyone? My name is Cameron, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to take a step away from our view go to-do list project uh, and start looking at a new technology called Towery. So my channel was actually started making videos on Electron.js, that's where I got my, that's where I really got my, uh, my first big wind, uh, first big wind in my sales, uh, with subscribers and everyone coming to uh, watch my channel. Um, Towery is very similar to, to that in the sense that uh, they are both meant for creating cross-platform applications. Um, however, Towery is much more performant. Uh, Electron is known across the internet for being used to create these bloated, heavy applications that are super resource intensive. Um, and if you have more than one or two of those applications running, you end up with your fans on all the time on your machine. <laughs> so that being said, uh, Towery boasts much better performance uh, using their own web views that they have created, as well as using Rust instead of Node.js on the back end. So I will, I will leave a link to the documentation for Towery down below in the description. And then I will also leave a video with more of an introduction about the tool down in the description below that I think you'll all enjoy as well. That said, I want to go ahead and get started with our application here. So let's first go ahead and do npm init vite at latest. So one cool thing about Towery is that Towery utilize uh, definitely one cool thing about Towery is that they recommend using Vite out of the box. If you've watched my other videos, you know that Vite is a core of uh, the front end of those applications, and uh, it's good to see that others are accommodating uh, that tool as well, uh, this being what they recommend out of the box. So we're just going to say YouTube Towery, and then I'm going to do view for our front end with TypeScript. We're going to CD into YouTube Towery. And we are going to npm i so that we install all of our dependencies. Next, we want to go ahead and get the Towery side of things bootstrapped. So you're going to want to open up your browser and head to this link here. I will leave this in the description down below so that you uh, it's easier to get to. Once you have gotten to here, you'll want to copy this curl command and paste that into your browser. And that is going to install Rust. It's going to install Cargo, which is like the NPM uh, or Node Package Manager uh, of Rust. It's the uh, way you'll be installing dependencies. Um, as well as RustUp, which is like uh, NVM or Node Version Manager, if you're familiar with that. Uh, for, for Rust, it, basically everything within the ecosystem that you're going to need to get started, it's going to install for you. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and run, because now you have access to Cargo, we are going to run Cargo install Towery CLI. And this is going to go pretty quick for me because I already have Towery CLI installed. But once that's finished for you, we are going to now do cargo Towery init. And this is going to ask you various questions about your application. Uh, so in this case, it says, what is your app name? Uh, this is going to be what your application name will be once, you're, once it's packaged. So we're just going to go with YouTube Towery. Uh, what should the window uh, window title be? Uh, we're going to go forward with YouTube Towery, of course. Um, it is going to ask, where are your web assets, HTML, CSS, JavaScript located? Um, in the case of Vite projects and many other projects, honestly, uh, this is going to be your dist folder. So basically, just where once you've run Vite, uh, once you've run your build command through Vite or Webpack or whatever build tool you're using, um, where is all of that located? Where are all of your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript assets located? So in our case, it's going to be the dist folder. 
what is the URL of your dev server. Uh, we are going to say 5173 as that is, HTTP localhost 5173 as that is the default for, uh, for Towery applications or for Vite applications, I'm sorry. And now we are going to go ahead and open up our project in our, in our editor of choice. Once you've opened up the project in your editor, you're gonna to wanna to navigate to this vitconfig.ts file. And under the plugins that you're using, you're going to, you're going to want to paste in these settings here. These Now these settings are what Towery recommends V using in order to be more compatible with Towery. Um, it's pretty awesome, they, they tell you in the docs that this is what they provide, but then they also step you through line by line with comments about uh, basically why you should be using this and uh, you know why you should probably not be messing with them. That being said, we now have the project completely configured so we can jump back into our terminal and you'll want you can do this in two different tabs or you can split like I have um, either way. Um, you'll want to start the front end, you'll want to start the front end application as well as the Towery side. So let's first get the Vite application running by doing npm run dev. You'll notice that Vite starts up really quick on that 5173 port that we mentioned earlier. And just like any other web application, it starts up in the browser very simply using the view uh, v using the view v boilerplate but now we need to go ahead and get that started not in the browser but in our towery application so in order to do that in the other tab or view that you have open you're going to want to type cargo towery dev now this is going to initially take a little bit because there's quite a bit that it has to compile. Um, I've already run this once, admittedly. Um, but once it has completed doing its compilation, uh, it will start up and this is what it looks like. So as you can see, that same boilerplate that we had running in the browser, we now have running in our Towery application. So that concludes this video. Um, this we've we have effectively gotten a boilerplate Towery applica application started, um, and in the next few videos, we'll be looking at all of the APIs that uh, that Towery offers, how we can uh, make our application uh, work with the various OS APIs that Towery has. Um, that Towery works with, um, as well as Rust and its uh, all of its capabilities, um, and, and then how we can make all of this work together with our uh, with our client side code because uh, Towery does that really well. Um, that being said, if you are not familiar with Rust at all, I definitely recommend that you brush up on that. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description to some good Rust tutorials and how. It, you can uh, you can get started with that, uh, and if you are familiar with Rust, stick around because I I, I greatly uh, I greatly would like to get some feedback from uh, those with experience on not just my videos but also what you think about the Towery technology in general. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Leave comment down comments down below. Give it a thumbs up if you uh, if you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.